Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Conference Carolina's Chats. So we got a unique one today, something that I'm really excited about. I hope I'm sure you will enjoy hearing from today. We've got two of our women's soccer head coaches in Conference Carolinas, and Andy McNabb from Barton and Sharif Saber from Mount Hope. How are y'all doing today? Doing great, Good, Brian. Thanks. I really appreciate you joining us. Hey, you know, this is a you know, this is something I proposed to you because both of you kind of have talked about, you know, podcasts, videos, things of that nature that you think could kind of help tell the Conference Carolina story. So I think that, you know, this will kind of give the people an understanding of, of why you believe that, <laughs> think that that will happen. And, and we'll see if we'll keep, if we can keep it on track, right? We'll see if we can stay, uh, we can stay having fun, but keeping about the discussion. And staying with that, one of the things that, you know, obviously there is a new normal, right? That's where we are right now. When we talk about the new normal, what has the new, have, what is that new normal? What have the last few months been like uh, for you both? We'll start with you, Andy. Um, well, it's funny you asked that. I mean, me and Sharif talk probably weekly uh, on this, this case, especially during when COVID started and running in to see if we were going to have a fall season or not. Um, I think the key word for us has been the uncertainty and the frustration um, that we are going through as coaches, and I know the rest of our colleagues are. Um, but more importantly, the players um, of every sport, um, just the complete uncertainty of not knowing what's going on. Are we playing? Are we playing? Um, even at this point, you know, we're planning for a spring season now, and unfortunately, cases are going up. And, and what does that look like? Um, but I, I really think we understand the situation, um, and you know, we need to do things the right way, and, and hopefully, we'll get on track for the spring. Sharif, kind of the same question to you. What has it been like on your end as you've tried to navigate all of this? Well, you use the word, the, well, the phrase, the new normal. And that's been the hardest thing for us with our players is getting them to understand that we're no longer in the world we were in eight months ago. And with all that uncertainty, there's, sometimes there's going to be miscommunication. Sometimes there's going to be breakdowns. Sometimes we're going to have to adjust on the fly. The positive side for us is within our program, I've seen a lot of positive growth. The girls are really good at adapting now, even as an institution, we're really become very good at adapting on the fly. And as a conference, I've seen it as well. So like Andy said, the uncertainty is maddening. And unfortunately, it's something that's across the board for everybody in every profession. But we're trying to make the best of it what we can. Yeah, and speaking, uh, talking about making the best of it. And I obviously don't want to take away any of your secrets, but at the same time, you know, when you, I think, I think people would be really interested to in know from a soccer perspective or really any sport perspective, but everything's changed when it comes to practices, sessions, how you're running things, you know, how has that changed on your end? Andy, what, you know, how, how have you been able to kind of, you know, evolve through that with practice sessions while still getting in what you want to do in your practices? Right. And again, as you say, the phrase, the new normal, our new normal here every day is the girls to do their Magnus health screenings and making sure they do that before practice and um, make sure they've got their mask on and, uh, and bring their own water bottle. That's, it's, it's not even soccer related, but that is the new normal for us every single day. Um, making sure that they've done all the protocols before we get there. We've been in an interesting situation from the start. We did um, groups of 10 to begin with. Uh, moved into groups of 15, groups of 20. Uh, we have a development squad here, so we t to get all the way up to 40 in there. Um, we took a pause uh, just to take a step back and went back into groups of 10 for about 10 days. But then we were right back into full groups with our mask on. And I think that's the, been the biggest, you know, trying to figure out training sessions for high exertion, but making sure players don't pass out with their masks on. Um, and I think it's just trying, and I'm sure it's the same way for Sharif as well, and Mount Olive, um, just trying to make it fun and engaging for the players. But as you say, trying to work on what are we going to be doing in the spring? I mean, for Barton, we're a very attacking team. So we've been doing a lot of finishing drills and a lot of technical work because in groups of 10, technical and fitness and finishing is really the only things you can do in that scenario, depending on how you break down your groups. You know, so for us, I mean, a lot of attacking, um, which makes my life a little easier as well. Um, it makes practice a little bit more fun for everybody. 
And Sharif, you know, you mentioned, you know, attacking, you know, what, you know, but it's some of the things that are kind of different right now are also finding facility space. How much facility space are you in? You're lucky that you have that, you know, you have a field, you have places behind you, you also have the, you know, a turf field that, you know, is used by other sports, but you could use if needed. But, but at the same time, it's trying to navigate that kind of stuff as well. How has that all evolved and also into your sessions and trying to incorporate that with everything you do? Well, you talk about facility space, but one of the things that is really overlooked right now is with the pods, we as coaches are out in the field four to five times as much as we used to be. Mm -hmm. So now, instead of training everybody for an hour and a half slot, now we're out there training pods of, like Andy said, six, 10, 12, 14. Now it's three hours, four hours, five hours. Goalkeepers need to go out for another pod at a different site. So besides managing where we're going to do it and how long we're going to do it, the hardest part for us right now is ensuring that we still have that one-on-one attention with the girls in the office because everybody assumes that what we do as college coaches is on the field. And like, we all like to joke about the majority of what we do is in the classroom. It's in the office. It's that little text message. And yeah. that's the stuff that we're really trying to make sure we don't let get swept under the rug. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're exactly right. And you know, you just kind of talked about, how things are changing and, and that, you know, things that people don't think about. And, you know, and Andy, you know, one of the things you, you, you just had to do was you had to get a new assistant and you're trying to do that while you're, uh, while you're trying to also deal with a pandemic, while you're running all these practices, as Sharif was saying, with, by, with, by yourself in many ways in that regard, you know, what was that like trying to get ready and also trying to get things prepared to hire Bella Alwario? Yeah, so I mean, it, from the start, um, I mean, I got the call from my old assistant, Ebony, who um, luckily took a Division Three head coaching job in Texas, and that's great for her and great for her growth um, in this profession, um, you know, but she took the job barely August, which obviously wasn't ideal um, at that point for us, because at, at that stage, we felt like there's still a chance we could have a season yeah. at that point as well. So our players were coming back in the mo- notion of we need to play in three weeks. Yeah. Um, but for us, you know, we got the word out, as you say, during a pandemic, everybody, with the job criteria at that point, we wanted to still hire the best person possible. And um, for Bella, she came from Concord University, a Division II program who made the national tournament last year. And for us as a program, that's the next step for us. Uh, and to obviously try and win Conference Carolinas, move on to the national tournament, regional tournament, national tournament. And she has that experience as a, as a coach at this level, uh, playing level, played at high division one level at Asheville. Um, I mean, and she's also a local girl for us. So to bring her in, co- club coaches in the area know who she is. She can then attract them to Barn, hopefully. I mean, she's made a great start for us and, you know, the team like her and she's going to be really good in this profession moving forward. Yeah, that's awesome. And, they, they, you know, I think that really is important to kind of touch on some of these things that we're all, we're t- all these things that we're talking about are things that, you know, publicly aren't being talked about because, they're, you know, they're the little things that you deal with. And that's your job to deal with the little things and make sure that a lot of these things aren't aren't noticed by people because, uh, you know, that's what you do. And that leads me into the next question. Sharif, you know, both of you are dealing with and obviously we can't get into specifics and different things like that when it comes to recruiting. But, you know, you've got you've got student athletes that may stay longer than you thought they were going to stay. And, you know, and that's a good and bad thing, good for them. And the bad thing, because it changes how you evaluate and what's going forward. But how has that changed the recruiting process overall uh, for you? Uh, we're going to be here for an hour to talk about. <laughs> yeah, tell us everything, Sharif. Yeah, tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's soak it in. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go back to one point. When Andy did lose Ebony, we did volunteer to come up to Wilson and help him coach. So. Okay. I was willing to send my staff and I up there to make sure he had the help he needed. It was declined that's, that's immediately. Kind of yeah. That's the kind of team effort we have here in Conference Carolina. <laughs> we were not going to try to poach any players, obviously, yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> um, as far as recruiting, just like everything else we spoke about earlier, and I hate using this word because it's overused right now, but it's fluid. We're having regular daily conversations with some of our what would be fifth semester or fifth year seniors. Hey, do you want to come back? Do you not want to come back? But what I found is everybody's focused on the girls who would graduate this fall, or sorry, this spring. What they're not talking about is the three year ripple on effect. Because all of our freshmen now technically have a fifth year automatically. So now what do we do when we look at transfers? What do we do when we look at the 2022 class, the 2023 class, the 2024 class? 
because now the needs are completely different because girls who would graduate out or girls who we might need to fill in different positions, they're still gonna be here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it definitely it, changes the dynamic. It completely does. I'm sorry to interrupt you right there, but you're, you're exactly right. It, it, it does. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff. And that's why, as I kind of started this conversation, it was why I wanted to have you both on, because y'all both communicate in that way. You're going through some of the same things. And it kind of leads mm-hmm. me in uh, to the next question, which is, uh, you know, you, Andy talked about earlier that y'all communicate, y'all talk. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, people think rivalries and you particularly, you know, two teams that are as competitive and as good of programs as you are. And you're both fairly new to the conference as well, but you both get along, you communicate. How does that work, you know, not necessarily just for your programs as rivals, but also in, in Conference Carolinas as a group communicating and trying to, uh, trying to get things moving in the right direction for Conference Carolina. Andy? Um, I mean, I think friendly rivalry is always, for me, is more fun. Um, you know, to give you an insight, um, you know, we lost to Mount All 3-1, uh, unfortunately, last year at home. And, you know, we didn't play this fall. So, um, you know, Sharif decided to send over a happy anniversary and sent me all of the goals from the game <laughs> and his players running onto the field. So, I mean, for me, it was a good laugh for about 10 seconds. And then I thought, all right, well, this can never happen again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I mean, I think that's just part of that aspect. And, you know, we do talk to others in the conference as well. And, and I think we've got a really good group now, especially in women's soccer. There's a lot of new coaches in the conference as well. And I know from the recruiting and seeing who they're signing, I think it's going to be a really, really competitive conf- conference moving forward. And, you know, with the inclusion of Pembroke and Francis Marion, I mean, I think this is going to be a really, really strong conference. And um, the, the fight for the playoffs, I think next fall, especially is is going to be a grind um you know and you know me and Sharif and you know all the coaches during conversations is how do we put conference carolinas on the regional map um i think the inclusion of those two um programs as well as other programs in our conference who will be getting better i mean i think it's going to be very strong and i think it's going to be really exciting um, and there could be a few surprises in there for sure yeah you're exactly right you know and uh, you know, aside from the anniversary gift that uh, he sent you the other day at three to one, Sharif, obviously, you know, you had, he talked about advancing regionally, advancing, you know, you got, you obviously got a little bit of the first taste of that last year, uh, you know, winning the regular season end term and then obviously competing in the, you know, in a game that in many ways you could have won in the regionals. I, I was lucky enough to be there. You know, what, uh, you know, what are the next steps, you know, kind of for y'all and as the conference that you're trying to progress that and helping the whole group to get to the point that Andy was just talking about? I actually think Andy said it perfectly. We as a group need to collectively move the conference forward together. And as the conference moves together, we recruit better because the standard's higher than because the standard's higher, the games are better than the games reach a national stage, which then prepare us for the NCAA tournament. So I think it starts with the institutions in the conference providing the coaches and the athletes with a platform, which I I have no complaints about, you know, not to toot you guys horn, but since you guys have come in, the conference has radically evolved since the time when I got here. So on behalf of all of us, thank you for that. And then our university presidents, our athletic directors, they're aware of what we need. They're moving forward as well, which allows us to give a better product for our student athletes, which then ultimately helps the coaches provide a better on the field product. Yeah. Well, first off, thank you for the, kind words I'll just say that it's you you hit the nail on the head you said Andy said it perfectly you just said it perfectly and this it's all about the student athletes right at the end of the day that's what everybody you know all you know including next year with 13 all 13 member institutions are trying to row the same way you know obviously you want to beat each other and you want to win those games and but at the same time it's the banner everybody's trying to get to that point and at the end of the day I think that's why you know, I think you're seeing changing is because everybody's starting to realize that it is about that banner and trying to get to that next level. But but it is nice to hear that people uh, that people see that and know that you know, and it's because of programs like you both have getting taking that to the next level. So that, you know, that's appreciated. But that kind of takes me to the next point as well. With a uh, <laughs> You mentioned it's going to be really heated next uh, next fall, Andy. But uh, you know we yeah. got stuff before that, right? Uh, yeah, we got yeah. a really yeah. we, uh, just a little bit, right? Uh, we got a heated uh, spring coming up, and you know that's going to be truncated. It's going to be completely different. But you know you're trying to uh, get to play, uh, you know, to play at your best level come April instead of November. I mean, right? You'd be trying to get you playing at your best level right now 
uh, in a normal year and you will next fall. But, you know, what is that? And I'll start with you, Andy. What does that kind of look like for you over the next few months as you start getting ready for that uh, mainly Sunday schedule in the, in the spring, but, you know, to get ready to compete for, in Florence, hopefully uh, in the, at the end of April? Yeah, I mean, so that's always been our goal, no matter if we're playing right now or if we're playing in the spring, um, is to get to where we felt we should have been last year. Um, and I think that starts what Sharif was talking about with the administration. I mean, I can't say enough about our administration here, of the fact that we have our student athletes and all of our students on campus right now. And I think that is the start of the journey for us. Um, having everyone here, being able to practice, for me, that's the start. Uh, moving forward now, you know, they, as, at Barton, they are going to be leaving at Thanksgiving and not coming back to January. So during that time, you know, a big saying in our, our, um, our program is be an adult. Um, so for them, they've got to be adults for two months and make sure they're in top peak shape for when they come back in January. And then, as you said, it's going to be a weird schedule this year where we don't normally have six days before another game. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be interesting where we can do a couple of different things and prepare in a different way. Um, really, during a normal year, we're doing a rest day, recovery day, maybe a practice, and then you're into a game. Um, rinse and repeat. Um, so this year, now that we've only got a game on a Sunday, a couple of bye games, um, I think it's the preparation is going to be more, as Sheree said earlier, mental. A lot of that's going to be video until they get back. And even when they get back, I mean, a lot of these girls haven't played since last November. Um, so, I mean, that's a long time without kicking a ball in anger um, against somebody else. So, um, for us, it's going to be more um, video. Then when they get back, it's going to be less, let's tick up the tempo a little bit here again. Our practices have been very good, but there's still that we're not playing anybody else. Um, and and we, I feel like as a program, that's what we need right now is being able to go and play in Mount Olive and see what we've got. Yeah, you're exactly right. And Sharif, you know, you know, you're not far from Wilson, North Carolina, but it's almost completely different in Mount Olive, North Carolina, because there, you know, there's just so much different things going on, even with two conference schools at both of your universities. Kind of talk about what it's like on your end as you prepare uh, for some of those things. Even Andy was just talking about. Well, Andy's absolutely right. Especially when everybody got back, the hardest part was, I mean, for us, I'll be blunt, was the motivation. You know, we're back and there's no fall season. Why are we training in groups of six and eight? Why am I out here grinding and running? So we had to reshift the messaging. It was, we have to focus on the spring because now we talk about back-to-back -back championships. Can we go win two championships in 2021? They, you have a unique opportunity now to go win one in April and then turn right around and win one in November again. No program in Division II history in the Conference Carolina has ever done that. Good or bad. So yeah. Yeah. That's our opportunity. So it allowed us as a program to step back. We're right now, we're rebuilding our culture with our messaging. We're rebuilding our core values. We're going through our fitness tests. We're going through our technical work. And we're also bluntly evaluating where we are as a program with the players. It's giving them an opportunity now where, like Andy said, normally it's come in, you hit preseason, and we just grind. Yeah. The freshmen for the first time ever as a fall athlete have time to develop which now the higher expectations for our freshmen are heading into the spring. You know, to us, you're no longer a freshman. You know, you're going in with a semester under your belt. We fully expect when you get back here in January, physically, mentally, technically, emotionally, you're a completely different person and player. I, I, just, I have to say, this is exactly what I thought this conversation was going to be like, meaning that I knew it would be good and then it would hit on some topics that I thought would really advance what we want to talk about. And that is how different it is on the campuses and how much you're really going through day to day. I want to say thank you to you both because, you know, as I mentioned, you reached out in the summer and said, hey, are we talking about doing some of these things? Are we talking about advancing the message through video, through podcast? And, uh, you know, we're trying to tell that story. We do have a unique story in Conference Carolinas. And as I said, it starts with the student athletes. It continues with you all and it continues with the institutions uh, that are doing a great job day to day. So I appreciate you both joining us today. And we'll see everyone next time on Conference Carolinas Chat. Thank you.